All right, in this lesson, we're gonna walk you through intangible assets. We're just gonna give you an overview of intangible assets. Remember that intangible assets are assets that you can't physically touch, but they do have a value to the companies that have them or have acquired them through purchasing from another company. So that's what we're gonna look at here. Um, very different from our tangible asset discussion that we've been having over the last few lessons. So let's talk a little bit about intangible assets. These are assets that you can't theoretically touch. They do have, they don't have a physical form to them. However, they do provide future benefits to the organization. They are valuable to us. So let's walk you through some of them just so that you have an understanding of some of these intangible assets that you might come across. So the first one here is trademarks. These are special names, images, or slogans, uh, which identify as a particular product or a company. Now there's really two types of trademarks. The first one is the registered trademark. And these are trademarks that are actually registered with the US Patent Office. Um, so the US Patent and Trademark Office is actually issuing you basically a registration saying that you are saying that you um, own this patent. Now, this doesn't mean that someone can't also file it or use your um, Logan, uh, sorry, your logo, image, or slogan, but you are gonna have to defend it, not the US government. The US government doesn't defend any of these trademarks, um, licenses that you've been given. The other one is an unregistered trademark. This is not registered with the United States um, Patent and Trademark Office. You usually see them with a TM instead of a R circle. Um, kind of the same legality as a register, but the register has more uh, bite to it because you've actually registered it. You actually have a date you registered it, so you kind of have an ownership date. And so if someone comes in with something very similar or the same, you can say, well, well you've had it first because you have this registration date. If you don't want to go through that process, you can just put a TM at the end of your slogan or your name, but then again, it has to, there's some laws around it. So like go talk to a lawyer when it comes to that. So just know that there's two types of trademarks. These are special names, images, or slogans, which identifies a particular product or company. So for instance, the Nike swoosh would be a trademark because the swoosh is identified to Nike, okay? So um, that's what that is. So that is a intangible asset. Copyrights, this is an exclusive right of a creator's work to publish, use, and sell for a period of time specified by copyright laws. Again, registered with the US government. Uh, this is usually done with creative types of work. Typically, um, there is a C for copyright. Now, you don't always have to register it um, with the government as a copyrighted item, but usually you'll see a C and that means copyright. So I kind of misspoke on the registration, but you know what I mean. So copyright creative works that you that are valuable to the owner, like a book, music, um, that um, you can't duplicate without their blessing. Okay. The other one is a patent. So this is usually refer, uh, reserved for a product or a production or process typically related to manufacturing. Patents are given protection by the federal government. So what the way that patents work is let's say you have an invention. So you patent it. When you patent it, you patent that with the US government. The US government basically gives you a monopoly on that product for 20 years or X amount of years. And I say X amount of years because um, it's subject to change. So right now it might be 20, but two years from now it'll be 22. Um, so patents give you the exclusive right to sell that product. And if anybody tries to sell that product that's very similar uh, or exactly the same, I should say, uh, then you can sue them. Again, the government doesn't get involved here. Um, the government's just providing you with that registration, but you have to defend it by taking um, your competitors to court if they start using that product. After 20 years, it comes off a patent. So in that case, um, anybody can basically use it or build it or make it uh, without paying you or asking for your permission. This is used a lot in drug companies. So you might've heard of, you know, you have the generic brand and the name brand. So once that name brand goes off patent, uh, then generic companies can then pull the patent application with the process of how to make it and make it and then sell it as a generic. So um, there is a finite period of time with that 
drug company can basically take advantage of the prices and then once it goes off patent, it goes off patent and that company has can do nothing other than either make their own generic, reduce the price of their own product or do, uh, or do something to try to keep the competitiveness going for that product. But a generic company can come in, swoop up the formula and then just produce it um, in mass quantities without paying a license or a fee to the company that invented it. So very, um, it's a good thing for the first 20 years, but then after that, it becomes an issue because you're going to lose a lot out because companies are just going to be able to make their own. Same thing. All right, and then franchises. These are rights by franchisors to franchisees uh, to use the franchisor's intellectual properties. These are base, These contracts are basically intangible assets. So basically what this looks like is like if you wanted to put up a McDonald's, you would have to pay a franchise fee and get a franchise license from a McDonald's corporation to use all of their intellectual property. And then once you've done that, that contract is the intangible license or the intangible asset. It's very valuable because you're now able to open up a McDonald's with the McDonald's brand, with the McDonald's um, equipment, with all of the McDonald's processes, with the intangible value of what McDonald's stands for. So you're getting all of that and that license gives you the right to do that and that is an intangible asset. It is worth something to that owner of that McDonald's restaurant. Then we have Goodwill. Goodwill is kind of unique. You won't hear a lot about Goodwill uh, right now, but Goodwill can only be purchased. It cannot be internally made. So uh, we purchase Goodwill, we don't make Goodwill. Goodwill is the difference between what a company pays for an asset, usually a business, and what its book value is. So if we look at a company, their book value might be $1 million, but the company the company that's acquiring them might pay two million. Why would they pay two million when the company's only worth one million? They're paying two million because there's things that are not on the balance sheet that are more valuable. So maybe it's their people, maybe it's their, um, in, uh, maybe it's their name brand. So we might pay two million dollars, even though they're only worth one million dollars on their book. So we're going to take asset minus liability as their book value. Their books show them worth a million, but they're really like worth two million. So that million dollar difference that we go from their book value to the two million dollar price tag, that's goodwill. So the additional price we pay. Now this goes for really anything. So this can go for equipment too. So the equipment is worth um, $100,000 in the market, but we want to pay $200,000. That difference would be goodwill. Okay. So, but it's usually only kind of dealt with when we talk about uh, businesses. So when we're buying a business, not necessarily when we're buying equipment, although we could, okay? Or parts of a business too. So let me get that out there. Parts of a business. So maybe we're buying a division of a company rather than the whole business. So the division is going to have a book value and the difference between the book value and what we paid for it, that's goodwill. Now, when we acquire it, intangibles are reported into the financial statement the same way as tangible assets are. However, we only capitalize intangible assets that we have purchased, not internally developed. So if we internally develop them, we expense the cost. We do not capitalize any costs associated with those intangibles. So when we're talking about intangibles, we can only include the cost that we acquired it, not necessarily if we generated internally. So if we spend $50,000 to make a new logo for a business, that we cannot include as an intangible asset because we're the one that is dictating. Now, if we buy someone else's brand, like if we buy Nike's brand and their logo, that's something that we've purchased from Nike. So we are going to put that in our balance sheet as an intangible asset. But us paying a developer to develop a logo for us directly, that's not included. We just expense that as a advertising or marketing expense, okay? Intern and development items should be expense as research and development expenses. So that's an expense. We'll throw it into research and development and just expense it for the year. We don't capitalize that cost. Now, what do we do after that? So we do not depreciate intangible assets. We instead amortize them. So we amortize the cost and then we'll use accumulated amortization. So just like depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation, we use amortization and accumulated amortization as the offset. Now the life of intangible, this is where it gets a little tricky. So intangible assets, we come up with a life. With intangibles, 
There may be contracts or laws that are involved. Um, so we're going to follow those instead of us necessarily telling them what's their life. Now, because things are rapid nowadays, we may need to say the life is two years rather than the patent's 20 years, okay? So intangible asset lives are unique due to their form and the legal protections that they have. There are two buckets we can put intangible assets in. The first one is our unlimited life, meaning that they have an unlimited life. They don't actually have a life. So for instance, a trademark like Nike, there is an unlimited life. What's the life of that logo? Well, as long as Nike keeps using it. Okay, so there is, these are not amortized. They are checked annually for impairment. So if we buy that logo from Nike and we plan to use it forever, then it has an unlimited life. We don't expense the cost. We only write it down when it's impaired or we get rid of it. Okay, so no amortization expense on the logo unless we plan on getting rid of it or the value of that logo goes down. So now people don't want them, they don't like the Nike logo, they don't want to associate a company with it. So we're going to write it down to zero and then we're going to take a loss on that impairment. Then we have assets that have a limited life. Usually, legally, they have limited life, like a patent, 20 years. So if a patent is 20 years, then they have a limited life. They don't have a forever life because after 20 years, another company can make a generic version of the drug. And so now that a patent is not really worth anything because anybody can now use that process to make that product. So these are capitalized and expensed over a straight line basis, time period based on use or legal protection. So we use the straight line basis to depreciate, to amortize the cost over its useful life if that asset is considered a limited life asset. Now, when we dispose of these intangibles, we do the same thing as we do with the tangible assets. So we're not actually going to go through a problem. So go if you have to dispose of an intangible, watch the tangible disposal. It works the same way. We're going to get the depreciation up to date. If it's unlimited, if it's a limited life, it's an unlimited, if it's unlimited, it doesn't need to be brought up to date because you're going to sell it. Okay, so uh, do the same thing that you do for a tangible asset for intangible assets. So that is a look at intangible assets. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.